Hello class and welcome to this Castlevania 2 Simon's Quest walkthrough right here on Video Games 101 by way of Let's Play with Brigands. I'm your instructor, Professor Brigands, and prepare to step into the shadows of the Hell House. We're back here, as it says in the intro right there, that's all they give you, that we're back here in Transylvania on business, not pleasure. <laughs> we're here to destroy forever the curse of the evil Count Dracula, but it won't be easy because we have to put him back together piece by piece. It's actually not that bad. It's only five pieces. And it's actually not that hard. I'm going to shock you right now when I say that I'm going to give Castlevania II Simon's Quest a 5 out of 10 on the difficulty scale, which equates on the frustration level to throwing your controller across the room. Maybe if you fall into a pit here or there, but honestly, most of the difficulty of this game is derived from not knowing where the heck you're going, from being told conflicting information, from the completely useless NPCs. It's like the reverse fluff facts in this game if you talk to any of them. But uh, we're here to unravel the, the mysteries, debunk the difficulty, and uh, help you defeat this game in a rather tidy hour or so, actually. If you're still thinking it can't be done, stick around. All right, let's push the start key on our controllers and start a new game as we start in the first town here in Castlevania 2. As we take a look at the controls for Simon's Quest, pretty straightforward. We can pause the game outright with select, bring up our items menu and pause it with start, attack with B, jump with A. If we hold up and hit B, then we can use our special item or special weapon, I should say. First order of business is to pop in this house right here, talk to this person, and purchase the holy water. And let's go to Blaze early on to tell us about the first item in this game, Blaze. All right, there are a ton of items to talk about in Castlevania II, Simon's Quest. So let's start with this first one that you should get. It should be the first item you purchase for 50 hearts. This is the holy water, a staple in the Castlevania series. This breaks blocks in this game, which you cannot otherwise break, allowing you to access otherwise inaccessible areas. Get this early on, hold up, tap B, throw it. It does a little bit of damage, which is useful early on in the game, but mostly for knocking out certain blocks. All right, the next order of business is to head outside. We want to wait till dark, essentially, so we can earn more hearts. Speaking of hearts, let's go back to Blaze to get an idea of what each heart is worth in Castlevania II Simon's Quest. Now let's talk about the hearts in Castlevania II Simon's Quest. We have the little heart, which is worth two hearts, the half of a big heart, which is worth four hearts, and then the math doesn't work out. Don't try to do the math on this one, but the big heart. Two halves, somehow we go from four to six. I don't know, whatever. I guess they figured eight would be a little too generous. I also want to mention that for the little heart, you get one experience. For the me, uh, the half heart, the half big heart, you get three experience. And the biggest one, you get five experience to your level. But like the professor explained, we only get these once we're in an area with, uh, once we're at a certain level and the enemies are hard enough. The game will decide. Just keep an eye and see if that experience level goes up, but... Just pay attention to the tips the professor gives you, you'll be fine. Thank you very much, Blaze. I appreciate that endorsement. So we're gonna head back to town now after we've done that. We're go to this top area here where the zombies have come out at night. These little ghouls, little green ghouls. Shout out to Charlie Day. But uh, I like to kind of alternate back and forth, kind of alternating to the left and right of the staircase to spawn in a zombie. Each time we turn around, we want to be efficient here on this first night. I'd like to get around 150 hearts, maybe a bit more if possible. We want to have about 200 to uh, purchase the next two items we want to buy. But, uh, yeah, speaking of our tips, let's take a look at the Briggs notes finally for Castlevania II Simon's Quest. First, know what you're doing, where you're going. We got you covered in that sense. This is pretty much the most efficient route to beating this game. We're even going to skip a couple items which you don't need. And uh, 
We're going to show you some ones you don't need as well, but still, this is pretty much the fastest track to beating this game, and as I said, roughly an hour, probably a bit more, because you got to stop off and grind. Speaking of grinding, we recommend that you do this in the mansions of the uh, of Castlevania 2, where time stands still. So whenever you're inside a building or inside a mansion, which I suppose also counts as a building, uh, time stands still, which means you can grind and grab all the uh, the hearts that you need without uh, having to worry about day cycle changing or you know running out of time. And the reason we care about time is because we can get different endings depending on how long we take to beat this game. If you beat the game in the first seven days, you get the quote-unquote good ending. If you beat it in eight to 14 days, you get the normal ending. And then if you go over 15 days or more, uh, it's going to be the bad ending. So with this track that we're playing with here, we'll probably beat it in about five in-game days as we get our first level up right there. Tops off our health. So you can see the time at the top. It's for uh, on day. That's the first number is the day, then the hour, then the minute. So it's day one right now, two in the morning. At six in the morning, it's going to switch over to daytime, and the zombies will disappear. Enemies will become easier all throughout the land, and uh, also earn us less hearts, unfortunately. But but it's not a problem because again, after tonight, we're going to do most of our grinding in the mansions. And I should also mention, leveling up, you can only do it when you get to a new area, essentially. So, you get your level up right now, you're seeing that the E-meter is stuck at 1. It's not going up at all because we're fighting the same enemies that got us to the first level. Pretty much a good rule of thumb is that every time you get to a new mansion, you can get a new level up. So that's basically how we're going to do it. Just getting every subsequent level up in the next mansion. Um, there's one caveat to that, we'll talk about that in the final mansion, but now that the uh, morning sun has vanquished the evil, or whatever their language is, let's pop into this door, pop back out, this guy will now appear, and we're gonna purchase the white crystal, and why are we doing this, Blaze? Alright, next we have the white crystal, which reveals the first mansion, as well as a hidden platform within said first mansion, so... You need this, go ahead and buy it. You'll need it later to trade out for subsequent crystals that you need. So grab this for 50 hearts. There you go. All right, so that's where we're headed next. The first mansion here in Castlevania by heading to the east of that first town, just following this path. We want to earn as many hearts as we can along the way. Let's not stop off, but we certainly want to... Hopefully get to 150. If you've been efficient with your zombie kill in there in the first town at night, you should be close to 150 even after buying that uh, that white crystal. I should mention that hearts max out at 256 for what it's worth, so whenever you're around 200, don't worry about grinding anymore because you'll probably have the max before you reach your next destination just through the course of killing all the, the enemies along the way. So if you have 150 hearts at this point, take this staircase down. If you don't, if you're close, just keep grinding in this area for, you know, maybe another couple minutes or so. We don't want to waste too much time on it. But if you do have enough hearts at this point, come down here. And we're going to enter this town right here. We're going to skip this door. Watch out for the, the pits. We can pop in the church right here and get the father to top off our health. We only need it the one there, but still worth it. Nice to show that in action. So we're going to come to this door right here, come up the stairs, and we're going to pop in here. And this is actually going to be our first whip upgrade. It's actually the second overall in the game. We skipped one in the first town, only because, well, let's just purchase it and let Blaze explain why we're doing this and give us an overview on the different whips available in... Castlevania 2 Simon's Quest, please. All right, let's talk about the different whips in Castlevania 2 Simon's Quest. In this game, we don't pick up power-ups for our whips. We purchase better whips. So the first one I recommend buying is the chain whip. At the beginning, we start out with just the leather whip. Basic, not much to it, does one damage. We can buy the thorn whip in the same town we start out uh, in for, I want to say, 100 hearts. But if you wait just a little bit longer, you can buy the thorn, I'm sorry, the chain whip, which does 
four damage for 150. The much better deal. Just hold out a bit longer. Make that purchase uh, right here like we're doing. And then we have for eight damage the Morning Star. Very important item because if you don't have this whip, you can't trade it in or get the augmentation for the best whip in the game, the Flame Whip, which the professor will show you how to get later on, but 15 damage from the Flame Whip, making it the best whip in the game. Thank you very much, Blaze. All right, so we're gonna head back up the stairs and to the right here, and we're gonna enter this mansion, which will not even appear unless we have that white crystal. Make sure that you have the white crystal equipped to get that first platform to appear, otherwise you'll be thinking to yourself, how the heck am I gonna get up here? But that's how we do that. So the mansions aren't too much more difficult than anything else in this game. The exception is there are some hidden bricks, some uh, some illusionary bricks, might be the best way of saying it, which will point out, which you can fall through, which are just kind of annoying, so be wary of that. You can toss holy water ahead of your path whenever you're going to see when there might be some, some fake bricks. We have our first one coming up here at the very edge of this next section, so we're going to want to make sure we're right at the edge before we jump right there, because those first two bricks are illusionary bricks. Head to the right here. We're going to come down and talk to this person down here, make another purchase. If you don't have 50 hearts, just uh, stop off and grind for a bit, pick those up. Not a bad idea in general, considering that, you know, we get our second level up here in this first mansion. And also time has stopped moving at this point, so we can take our time, get all the hearts that we need, get around 200 before we leave if you like. But right now we're going to talk to this person who's going to offer us an oak steak. So we're going to purchase this. Also note that there's one of these hint books in here which aren't necessary if you're watching this video. We're going to be skipping most of them, but just a heads up, that's what that's about. But uh, anyway. Let's go to Blaze and talk about that oak steak. All right, the oak steaks will charge you 50 hearts per. A little expensive. You wish you could get more than one use out of them, but I don't know, I guess single use, the orbs are that tough, however they want to explain it. I'm pretty sure the guy just wants to make 50 hearts every single time, but this opens the containing orb, which has Dracula's body part for that mansion, so you gotta have it. Yep, and as we go into our menu, we equip it and hold up and press B to use it on this orb. And we now possess, I said process because there's a typo at some point in this game. But uh, Blaze, why don't you tell us about the rib as we continue giving you a workout here in our first class of the new year, Blaze. All right, Dracula's rib reflects some projectiles when equipped, not a bad kind of passive item to have equipped. Uh, it only deflects things when you're not moving, so you can be ducking or just standing still to deflect it. But when you're moving, it will not protect you, so keep that in mind. All right, thank you, Blaze. You'll see that we jumped ahead right here. This is a good area to do some level grinding, just to keep cycling back and forth, killing these guys, and eventually you'll get that level up. You should be on level 2 at this point in the game. But yeah, that's a nice safe area. There's always a general, generally like a, a safe stretch where there's maybe just one or two skeletons on either side, like right here, where we can just keep moving left and right. Just very, uh, very predictable enemies with predictable movesets that we can easily kill to get our hearts and our level up. But anyway, after we've done that, done a bit of grinding, we're going to head east out of that first mansion and head on up this way. Again, continuing on the fastest stretch, most efficient route in Castlevania 2. We have a new enemy for the first time, these spiders. They're kind of annoying. You can jump up and whip them before they have a chance to get their webs out if they're close enough to you. Otherwise, just mine those webs. You can also whip the webs. And there's that famous phrase, what a horrible night to have a curse, which has been parodied and memed and put on t-shirts and all sorts of merchandise over the years. It's one of those things where the developers, I don't think, have any idea of how impactful some of these things are going to be. A lot of times it's just a poor translation, which makes it all the better. But anyway, we have another item down here. There really are a lot of items in this game. I wasn't joking, we're going to give Blaze quite a workout today. 
We're going to come all the way over here, and we're going to use our holy water not only to break through that first area, mind the bats, you can hit them when they hit their lowest point there, but use it right there to grab this flame. The sacred flame, what can you tell us about that blaze? Alright, the holy fire arcs like holy water, creates flames on the ground which last for a few seconds at the point of contact. Not a bad item for taking down enemies who are just on the ledge beneath you. Holy fire, sacred flame, it's all good. I like your, I like your, uh, your words. I like your words, Blaze. So let's head to the right now, continuing on this path. We're going to come up on our next mansion, actually. We're going to skip this staircase for the moment. Just keep on moving to the right. It's actually some parts of this game where we're not even going to head to because it's just typically either a dead end, tips that we don't need, or an item that we don't really need either. We're going to get, you know, 85, 90% of the items in this game, something like that, but yeah, there's just more than we need. So time-wise, it's probably going to be night when you come to this next town. You can stop off, and that should not take three hits. I'm not sure what that's about. Not with the chain whip. Every now and then you get a glitch. I know some of these enemies are harder at night, but these zombies only appear at night. Try heading upstairs here, and we're going to kill time until morning right up here. Doing the same trick that we did in the first town. Normally we wouldn't stop off and be grinding here, but we do need an item from this town to access the next mansion, actually. So while we're just doing a bit more time killing right here, let's go to Fluff for our first Fluff fact of Castlevania 2, Simon's Quest. Fluff? In our class on Castlevania 1, link in the description, I talked about how the title Castlevania came to be, and it's purely a Western title for the franchise. In Japan, Castlevania 2 is simply titled Dracula 2. For the Western release, the game's creator and director, Hitoshi Akamatsu, came up with the name Simon's Quest. Speaking of Japan, one of the many lines in the game if you talk to the townspeople is, Don't look into the Death Star or you will die. This is a reference to the popular Japanese manga, Hakuto no Ken, in which it's prophesized that if two warriors engaged in a battle see the Star of Death, one of them will die soon. Most American and other Western region players just shrug their shoulders at taking this as just another piece of wacky miss or non-information delivered by the many useless townspeople in this game. Oh, so useless. Thank you, Fluff. Yeah, there's something about most of the townspeople are too afraid of Dracula to help you and uh, to the point that they will actively feed you misinformation to kind of ruin your quest, but a few of them tell you the truth. It's just it's very difficult to make heads or tails of it, but... We always tell you the truth, and that's the main thing. So we're going to talk to this guy and exchange our white crystal for a blue one now. Why do we want the blue crystal? What about it, Blaze? All right, the blue crystal. We exchange the white one for the blue one. We use this to access Rover Mansion at the lake by kneeling at the right spot, as the professor will show you in just a moment. Thank you very much, Blaze. Before we get to that, though, let's pop into this house right here. Melt the floor away via the holy water. Is that... Are we meant to believe that that's evil floor? Is that possessed? Satanic flooring? Just those couple bricks? But anyway, we're going to talk to this person. We're going to buy ourselves some laurels. And why are we doing this, Blaze? All right, the laurels grants you five to six seconds of invincibility. You can carry four at most until you get a silk bag, but it's not really necessary. You don't really need these outside of a couple swamp areas in this game, but... You can get two at a time for 50 hearts. Go ahead and grab them. Not bad idea to have a stockpile now and then, but uh, yeah, the laurels. Thank you very much, Blaze. Yeah, you might think it's a good tactic to just stock up on these and use them to wail on bosses and all that kind of stuff without worrying about damage, but not the case. Not necessary. We're just going to be using it a little bit later in uh, some... Some marshy areas, swampy areas that uh, just sap your energy. Not even that big of a, a hassle, honestly, but anyway. We're going to buy some garlic while we're here in town as well after the laurels. And what do we do with the garlic, Blaze? All right, the garlic summons the right person in a graveyard if you're at the right spot. Just make sure you're in the right spot to use this and you can get an item from a person in the graveyard. Alright, thank you, Blaze. Yeah, this is one of those things that we literally don't need to beat the game, but 
You know what, we were walking by. Let's show you how to do this right quick. Tactically, we want to go to the left here, but we'll just make a very quick pit stop. Heading right, jumping over these again. Dangerous town, by the way. What, who laid out this graveyard? Who designed it to leave these death traps in place? But we're going to use the garlic right there to summon this person. And they're going to give us a silver knife. All right, what can you tell us about the silver knife to save our neck, please? All right, the silver dagger, a throwable dagger, which does seven damage but consumes one heart every time you use it by holding up and pressing B. Not too bad, if you ask me. Not too bad. Seven points of damage with the silver dagger. Something tells me we could do better. Actually, the Briggs notes tell me we can do better, but anyway. So now that we have that, again, don't need to buy the garlic. If you don't have the money, don't worry about it. There's, uh, you get two just like the laurels when you purchase it. So we can use the other garlic at another point in this game, which uh, I might even skip altogether because it's just not a necessary item. But we're going to head west now, taking out a few enemies along the way. Not really concerned about hearts since we're getting most of those in the, the mansions around town, around the lands of Transylvania. We're going to take this staircase down now, finally. Head to the right here. Don't necessarily need this blue crystal quite yet, but I'm gonna have it ready. For accessing the second mansion. Don't worry if you fall down here. Not a problem, we're just gonna keep pressing on to the east. No reason to go down at the bottom there. Unless you like to challenge yourself. All right, so have that blue crystal out here. Kneel at the edge of this lake. You can already see where it's gonna give way at the bottom. And now we can dip right in. Drop down here. And just like that, we have found the second mansion. Watch out for these skeletons. Throwing bones at you, jumping around. Again, the mansion's not too dangerous. You would think they would've put a lot more difficulty into uh, this part of the game, or platforming, or dangerous pits and things like that, but not really. No. A few false walls and things like that. Speaking of false walls, we can jump right through there to head to the right and skip a lot of uh, this mansion. A lot of the needless parts, which really don't have any purpose except to throw you off your game. Mind this right here. We're going to come down to the bottom right, actually, early on, so we can purchase yet another oak steak from this person, making a killing. Another 50. There's going to be a point later where we want to have an extra oak steak for the, uh, the next mansion, where it can save us some time from where you really have to go out of your way to find that person in the mansion, so... It's a good idea to grab an extra one on your way out. You can only carry one at a time, unfortunately, so... Don't try to buy two thinking you can hold more than one. That'll just be a waste of money. They won't tell you that. They'll take your money. They won't give you anything in return, but... You know how these people are. Sacred Flame works well here, but if you're... Impatient like me and don't want to yeah, this is not working out. There we go. Just a reminder, if nothing else, at how useless that holy water is as an offensive weapon at this point in the game. Already. Careful jumping here, make sure you're at the very tip. Physics don't really apply in this game. Simon can be 99% off of a brick, kind of hovering, the, you know, most of them. And uh, there's another tip book there that we don't need for what it's worth and uh and still not fall so we really want to get to the edge of these bricks before we jump when it's going to be a long jump just drop all the way down here use our next use our oak stake here to get our next piece of dracula and where we're carrying these things this is going to be his heart we just like put this in our pocket a little weird about that, but tell us about the heart, please. All right, Dracula's heart. We need this to show to the ferryman a little bit later to access the third mansion. So just keep that in mind. The professor will explain when you get there, but that's what it's for. 
Get some cred with the fairy man. All right, good luck. The annoying part is having to fight your way back out the exact same way you came in each of these mansions, but again, since we need to do a little bit of grinding, it's not that big of a deal. This is not a bad stretch right here to do it on. Got skeletons on either side, which just keep respawning. In our case, I think we're about to level up regardless, so just fought enough enemy. There it is, in between the different mansions. It's always nice when you don't have to actually stop to grind. 126 hearts. That'll do for now. After the second mansion. I think the most expensive thing in this game is 200 hearts, so... We should be good pacing-wise. As we now exit back out the way we came in. Mine the pit right here. I didn't really mention the knockback that uh, Simon always seems to take when he gets hit, so just be careful when you're on one of those narrow platforms like that. That said, this game has unlimited continues. If you happen to die, you get to keep your hearts, but if you lose all your hearts and have to continue again, then you'll be left with zero. I think your experience resets too, but you'll still be on the level that you were when you died, so... Alright, so now we're going to head back out and up through the, the fake lake right here. And while we're backtracking a bit, we actually need to backtrack all the way to the beginning of the game at this point. The first town of Jova, so just keep heading west, north and west, essentially, or up and west. Collecting hearts along the way, you should be in good shape by the time you get there, but... Let's go to Fluff Fact while we're backtracking here, have some downtime, and get another fun fact about Castlevania II Simon's Quest. Fluff? While many players and critics noted the similarities between Castlevania II and Metroid with its open world and slightly non-linear system designed to encourage exploration, director Hitoshi Akamatsu actually credits Konami's The Maze of Gallius as the major inspiration behind this game. Looking at this footage, you can kinda see it. Though I'm more inclined to believe that Akamatsu was just annoyed at people comparing it so much to a non-Konami game in Metroid and came up with this explanation. Yeah, your guess is as good as mine. I think that uh, that makes sense to me. I know that's probably what I would do in his situation. But uh, certainly not the gameplay, necessarily. Everything's a bit looser. In, uh, or maybe tighter is a better way of putting it in Metroid, but uh, yeah, certainly this game encourages you to look around, explore, uh, dare I say frustrate you while you don't know what you're meant to do next or where you're meant to go. So again, there's, you know, a decent part of the overworld map that we're not even covering, maybe, you know, 20% that you just don't need to check out. An item here or there, but nothing essential. We're gonna get the item of, uh, of all items, Blaze's item of the game, in the next mansion, as we pass the first mansion right here. Almost back to the first town. These laurels are gonna come in handy that we bought. Note the... blends into the background there, but note the platform that that creature jumped on right there. Put your holy water here, or your flames. This will take two at night, but it's nice they leave you a few extra hearts. Yeah, no need to grind when you're headed back to the first town, since hearts are... I hate that, that always seems a little cheap. You gotta be... <laughs> it's a good rule of thumb that could have been the fourth Briggs note to always be whipping when you enter a new screen. For what it's worth, you can uh, run out all your lives at the end of that last mansion after you clear it, and... Uh, get a password, and then use the password, and that will start you back at the first town. You won't have your hearts, but, you know, if you want to shave off maybe another day or something, in-game day, you can do that. But again, we're going to get the good ending with this pace, with this Castlevania 2 Simon's Quest walkthrough, so there's no need to get, you know, over-the-top fancy about killing yourself. <laughs> Not sure if over-the-top fancy is the way to describe that, but... 
Chain Whip still doing pretty well for us, at least in this area. We'll want to get that Morning Star, see we're maxed out on hearts at this point. We're just going to cut through town here. And the timing is a little interesting coming up here with the, uh, the Ferryman. And I'll advise you, depending on what time of day it is, to uh, possibly do something differently. These guys are a bit tougher. These are two-hit monsters. You can use Dracula's rib right here to reflect the shots these guys are hitting at you. Just make sure they don't knock you back to the town. Definitely a dangerous place to be, though, if you head out west from the first town early on in the game before you have the right equipment. Again, you just don't know. You don't know where you're going. We can use a laurel right here to not to uh, keep ourselves from taking any damage. Select it and up and B as normal. I guess that little cat or whatever that thing was is still alive. I don't really know. Hope we can buy something soon though. It's never good having max hearts. So we want to have this uh, Dracula's heart equipped and then talk to this guy and he'll show you the way impressed that you managed to grab Dracula's heart. And if you've done it right, you'll hear that sound right there. If you don't have the heart equipped, he'll take you somewhere different, which we will need to go to eventually, but for right now, let's just head to the third mansion. It actually doesn't really matter what time of day it is. It's going to advise you if it's nighttime especially to come down here, but I think we're good on time. If you've been playing along with this walkthrough, then you're probably at about the same time on the, I guess we're on the third day at this point, something like that, but this is going to be the mansion where we want to buy the extra uh, oak steak, but on the way out, mind you, so keep that in mind. Again, nothing too taxing right here. they introduce one new monster, or at least a monster we haven't run into too frequently before this point, who will give you a full heart, so you get the six hearts from that. So that's nice, but it's a little bit dangerous with the uh, projectiles they shoot at you. They don't come right at you, so it's a bit more difficult to deflect it with your, uh, your dra that guy right there. Still a good idea to have that equipped right now, the rib, but you can see kind of fires one up and then one down and they kind of arc a little bit. Might be impossible to not take damage right here. There we go. And you'll have one bouncing along, falling behind you. See, there we go. There's the six hearts right there, which we don't need right now. This is the only time in the game where I wouldn't mind dropping 50 hearts on an oak stake. And I think we can purchase one just below here. I think it's just on the next screen and down a bit. Flame might not be a bad move. I wouldn't mind getting hit by this guy, but he's probably going to knock me onto the spikes, and that does considerable damage. So we want to avoid that. You can always pull out a laurel there. Monies or hearts become less of an issue at this point in the game, so... Not a bad idea to make sure you're topped off on those for situations like that. I like spamming the uh, the sacred flame right here. The holy fire, to use Blaze's terminology again. I like that. A little Foles reference on top of that. If nothing else, we're getting experience right now, so it's still not a bad idea to take out some enemies here in this mansion so we can get to, I guess it's going to be level 4 maybe? Level 3 or 4? Not sure where we are at this point. We max out at 6 for what it's worth. Each level up you get, you get a bit more health, obviously, but your defense goes up a little bit. Your attack only goes up when you improve your whip, so... But still, very important to level up. And very important to get Gary in, finally, for our first boss in Castlevania 2, Gary. It's Scary Gary's Boss Beaters. All right, Death. We're up against Death themselves, and surprisingly, in Castlevania 2 for our first boss, Death, not that difficult. Just position yourself in the bottom left corner, just outside of that door, and start whipping. 
you will take da uh, down the size that death throws at you. Once they get close enough, you'll start doing damage. If they do hit you, you'll get knocked back, but you'll stay in the room. And the damage you dole out to death will be a lot more than he sends back at you. Keep it up. You've successfully destroyed death. Well done. All right, thank you very much, Gary. Good to finally see you. So, I want to hear about that golden knife first and foremost from Blaze. All right, the gold dagger in Castlevania 2, Simon's Quest, gets my award for item of the game. It does 15 damage with each hit. It stun locks, it costs two hearts, and I say it does 15 damage with each hit, but when it launches, when it makes contact with your victim, it does subsequent hits as it catches fire. Given the fact that they're stun locked, it's doing like 45 damage every time you do a successful hit. This positively murders bosses later in the game, as Gary will explain. So good, it's OP. It's completely overpowered in this game, but that's not your fault. Use it. Good luck, Blaze. And before I forget, what can you tell us about Dracula's eyeball? All right, Dracula's eye allows you to see items behind false blocks before you break them. Like you could use holy water on something. You wouldn't know where to use it. If you have the eye equipped, now you'll know how to use it. Not really necessary since we're showing you where to use your holy water, but there you go. That's what Dracula's eye does. All right, thank you very much, Blaze. Don't forget to grab that extra oak steak on the way out, since you don't have one in your inventory now. But yeah, Dracula's Eyeball. Another one of those items which would probably be more useful if you weren't watching this, but you are watching this, so you never have any need to uh, pull out that eyeball. Just bragging rights, I guess, when you go to the local Transylvanian taverns. Be like, oh yeah, you're tough? Well, check this out. <laughs> That's Dracula's frickin' eyes. You slam it on the bar. Ends all disputes very quickly. As you can see, we jumped right ahead to we uh, where we hit our level up right there. I don't necessarily recommend grinding in that particular spot. I just like that that guy gives you more hearts as we can cut through right there. But there are much safer areas if you're low on health. Uh, if you don't want to worry about that guy bouncing around and shooting his projectiles at you. Where you can just take out these more conventional skeletons for four hearts to get yourself three experience per kill but anyway however you want to do that you should be back at about 256 hearts again at this point after you did some grinding gold dagger is a good way actually since you're uh, earning a lot of hearts in the process anyway to launch those at those little uh, gargoyle like guys or really anyone that you want to be dead you're pretty much average and I know enemies don't drop hearts on every single kill but You'll pretty much average enough, assuming you watch out for that <laughs> trick trick floor right there to, uh, to keep ahead in the hearts game. But anyway, we're going to head back to the right now. Back to the ferryman. I'm going to show them not the heart this time. Just talk to them. Mind the uh, creatures coming out of the water here. And actually... We can just stay on the ferry, since when they're blue like this, you know that they're going like to the normal way, to the next town. As long as you don't have that heart equipped. Head to the west here, and we'll be in the next town. The only thing really of uh, consequence to do here is to talk to this guy. These are the gem guys, always dressed that way. And they're going to exchange now the blue crystal for the red crystal. Got a crystal exchange program working here. And what do we know about the red crystal blaze? All right, the red and final crystal summons the tornado to take you to the fourth mansion and drains the lake later in the game. Got to be kneeling at just the right spot, which a lot of people find very frustrating, understandably so. We'll show you where to use, uh, where to use them, where to do it, but... Yes, the red crystal used for that purpose, the final crystal in the game. All right, thank you very much, Blaze. Now that we have that, we can travel to the next mansion. I'm trying to get to this next town before night falls so we can make the, uh, the purchases that we need. One purchase in particular. I don't think there's a church in the next area, but... 
I kind of almost think of the next mansion as being a church because we can get all of our all of our health back with our next level up and it's relatively safe to do that there so we're gonna pop into this first room get our holy water back out and instead of breaking the floor this time we're gonna break through the wall and then another wall not sure why this person is so paranoid it's like they don't want to make any money here buy some more laurels top them off main purchase we want to make though we're gonna to have to head west and up a little bit Blaze already talked about it, but we're going to grab ourselves the Morning Star, which does, I want to say, 8 damage. So it's going to double the damage we're doing with the Chain Whip right now. Right in here, we just made it. Or maybe we had a little extra time, I don't know, but I think this one's going to run us 200 hearts. Money well spent. Because not only are we going to get this whip out of it, but we have a free upgrade which comes, which only comes with this particular whip, so definitely want to buy the Morning Star. So we're doing double the damage now. We even have a bit more reach. Sort of like the, the upgrades of the whips in the other Castlevania games. So I'm glad we made that in time before night fell and we had to just kind of smack some zombies around until morning. Drop down here. We're going to continue on our merry way to the west here for one of the most frustrating puzzles in this game. So we were pretty much cleared out in terms of hearts at this point. But that's alright. Honestly, now that I think about it, there's not too many more hearts that we need in this game. I'm trying to think if we need to buy anything else. One more oak steak, I suppose, since we already have the next one. That's... Alright, we might fall into the water right here. This, this might be the first death. This caught us at a bad time. Uh, did we get the... Alright, there we go. Not a horrible night to have a curse, but a horrible night for, well, a horrible place on the screen to fall right there for that to uh, trigger. Anyway, equip the red crystal and then kneel right here. Actually, we might need to kneel a bit. I know it takes a while. It's about five seconds. I think it would have come by now. I don't want to break it just in case it's going to come. All right, I think it might be a bit deeper to the left on this, so let's go a bit more over here just to show you truly how frustrating this is. <laughs> have to be in the exact spot at the exact right item equipped. But this very localized cyclone is going to drop us right outside of the fourth mansion. Which, since we have the... Uh, these guys are tough. Morningstar is taking them down with one hit. That's alright. But since we have that next oak stake, which we purchased, we can just jump right through here. Don't worry about going up if you have the next oak stake. And these are... I think these are... These, oh, these might be, um... Holy water. Yeah, there we go. Thought we could go through invisible ones there, but now these are breakable with the holy water. So yeah, if you don't have the oak stake, then you kind of have to go the long way, going through like a, a false bit of the floor to find the next oak stake salesperson that are kind of just hanging out in the void. So we can shave a good probably four or five minutes off of this game by coming this way. We're on level three right now, so we can grab our, our next level up, certainly, while we're in here. Just shows you how tough the enemies are at this point in the game. Taking at least nine points of damage each time. If you wanted to, you could use your gold dagger right here, but we, uh, we don't have a whole lot of hearts right now, so just work on getting that number back up. At this point, we'll use our oak stake and grab, what do we got this time? The Dracula's Nail. What do we know about the nail, Blaze? All right, Dracula's Nail this time breaks certain blocks like the holy water, but you can use your whip to do it when it's equipped. Thank you very much, Blaze. Yeah, another one of those items we don't really need, but you do need it, and that you can't beat the game without it. So that's where I like to level up as we jump ahead. Just a nice little stretch there with two skeletons on either side. Just, you know, settle in, get to level four. And now we're going to head back out. Very quick mansion, thanks to that extra oak stake. It's the only instance where the the path to getting to Dracula's body part is not on the way, so 
Once again, we want to have our red crystal equipped right here. Get two uses out of this crystal and kneel. You could already see that the it was a false lake once again. Unless you don't use the crystal, in which case you'll drown. But anyway, let's get that holy water back out. And instead of heading up, we're going to jump on these blocks here. I didn't mention this earlier, but make sure you jump at the point when the uh, the block is going up to get a lot more elevation with your jump. If you jump while it's going down, it'll kind of stunt your jump. I'm not sure the physics check out on that, but especially with other video games. But anyway, we get a upgrade to our Morning Star to burn away evil, which means we now have the Flame Whip, the most powerful weapon in this game, or base weapon, tied with the, the Gold Dagger. You can see the difference in the jump right there if you jump while it's going up or down, but just keep that in mind. Very tough enemies at night in this stretch of the game, taking more than one hit with our our flame whip, which means essentially that they have at least 16 hit points. So we're not messing around at this point in the game, but everyone still moves pretty slowly and predictably, so it's not that dangerous. There's not a lot of, like, just fast-moving, difficult-to-avoid enemies. And still, always be whipping when you get to the next screen. you think the Flame Whip wouldn't do much against this guy, but... gets the job done. We're maxed out on the, uh, the hearts again after doing that grinding there. And here, we want to make sure we're jumping at the peak, each one of these, as it's going up, approaching that peak. To have a nice safe jump. Be careful, we do have enemies moving slowly in from the left and right. So you do need to be a little urgent on those moving blocks there. Here's another stretch where we want to use our laurels to avoid taking some damage. I think we need to use two or three here. This next uh, swamp area is considerable, so you might want to pop another one. You see the edge, I don't mind taking a little bit of damage, it doesn't sap you that quickly. And here we are on the final mansion, outside of Dracula's castle itself, which is a lot more straightforward. It should be made uh, clear that in this dungeon, this mansion, we can actually get two levels up if you're only at level four. So if you're at four at this point, if you're playing along, you can get two levels up, so... You'll notice each time, I haven't mentioned this, but the amount of experience that you need to get the next level goes up by 50, so at this point I think it'll be 300 and 350, something like that, or 250 and 300, one or the other, to uh, finally top ourselves off, but just see how powerful that gold dagger is right there. Stunning all the enemies and doing, if you let it, 45 damage, if they can withstand it can be very useful against some bosses, as I think Gary's going to mention coming up here. We'll let, he let him talk about that a bit more. Get some hearts along the way here, but really we're just... Not really any way to get around having to do some grinding. I wouldn't even necessarily say it's necessary to beat this game. If you don't really feel like doing it at this point, you're just saying, hey, Professor, level 4 is good enough. You're not wrong. Level 4 is good enough. Since we're mostly just falling back on the gold dagger at this point in the game. But it is nice to be able to get our health back. I will say that. If you need to get your health back, <laughs> you're a little low. This is a relatively safe place to do it. Just squeeze in between a couple skeletons and just uh, doing, doing the thing. Doing the thing. Make sure you grab that uh, oak steak, obviously. One last one that we'll need in this game. And I get another scent, by which I mean heart, out of me, oak steak dealer. And it's not a bad idea to dr drop straight down right here. We can come to the left, and we're going to buy some more laurels. Or not buy, actually we're just going to get these straight out. This person's just happy to have the company. Be very careful with those, those moving platforms there. I beg of you to take these laurels. There we go, so we should have four now. Again, there's a silk bag that, uh... I gotta watch out for the, the webs here. You might want to pop a laurel right here for these spikes. You'll probably need 
two or three to get through the rest of the game. You can buy some, we have to backtrack. I don't think they're gonna give us any more. They might if we had the, the silk bag, actually, which we are not showing you, but again. All that not necessary. Oh, that was, okay, that was interesting. Dangerous area here. These spikes, still doing a lot of damage. So if you want to pop a laurel there, just ignore that. That's one way to do it. And let's go to Gary for the second of three bosses in this game. Gary. Boss Carmilla. Carmilla? Uh, however you want to pronounce it. Very famous boss from the Castlevania series. Uh, but we can take them down very easily with the boss we got from death. As Blaze covered already. Best item in the game. Use that gold dagger to stun lock the boss right here. And just make sure they don't get to move. They'll just keep doing that clockwise move that they get above it. Wait till they come down again. And just keep throwing that dagger. Use Dracula's rib to deflect the, uh, the, the fire, the projectiles that Carmilla sends at you. But other than that, just use the gold dagger. Congratulations, not a hard battle. Not hard in the least, thank you very much. And what do we know about that cross that we picked up, Blaze? Alright, the cross! This is just an item necessary to reach Dracula's castle later on in the game, so can't beat the game without this cross. Alright, good luck, Blaze. So we're gonna skip ahead now and get our two levels up here. Uh, and this is kind of the stretch area I recommend. And this is our second of two levels, so we should be maxed out now on level six. No more experience is going to our total, but yeah, right outside the entrance, that is probably the best place to safely grind for some uh, some hearts and experience points right there to max yourself out. Look at the size of our health bar at this point, looking pretty good. Use our laurels here to uh, survive the swamps. Use one more right here. And we can, um, we can purchase some more in town as we backtrack our way here. It's really up to you, but I really don't think you'll need them. I think you need one more for one final swamp in this game, but... Now we're just decimating these enemies during the daytime, at least. So that's nice. Let those gold daggers loose at this point in the game. No reason to save them. No reason to hold on to, to hearts at this point. Just go for it. And let's, while we're backtracking all the way, at least uh, to that first town we cyclone to, and beyond to the east, points east, let's go back to Fluff, get another Fluff fact about Castlevania II, Simon's Quest. We love comparing box art in these classes, and you'll note the difference between the North American version, also note that its whip arc is in the shape of a two on this cover, and the European version where Dracula has unaccountably been removed. The reason might be the North American version's obvious resemblance to the cover art for Dungeons and Dragons game module Ravenloft, and Konami wanted to avoid legal trouble with the subsequent European release. Thank you, Fluff. Yeah, that is pretty obvious, actually, now that you mention it. As we continue to head past previous mansions, heading to a new area now. So that's where the Cyclone dropped us off, that last mansion's entrance. By the way, I thought it would be a good idea to hold off on getting the final experience points for this last level until we got close to uh, Dracula's castle, thinking, you know, get that last level up then and get a free bar of health in the process. But once you get to this point, all the enemies are considerably weaker, at least in the eyes of the game. So there's actually no more enemies that we could have leveled up with at this point. But we can pop in there and get some health if we need it. I'm feeling pretty good today. You can grab some laurels up there, I think, as well, if you need them, but I don't think we're going to need them. I think, uh, I think Gary's got us for the, the final battle. Have that golden dagger out. Toss it at your discretion. With the full complement of hearts at this point, there's really no reason to hold back going to destroy anything which gets on our path at this point, so. Pretty much indestructible. It's a good way of putting level 6 Simon Belmont at this point in the game. And we're going to head down here. Go to 
to the right. Just cut through this town. This should be the final town before we reach Dracula's castle. Pretty dead. Not a lot going on here. We're just gonna cut right through. We have everything we need at this point. Don't need any more hearts, don't need any more experience, obviously. Yeah, if you have more laurels, you know, not the worst idea to just pound one here and breeze past these guys. Not that they're that difficult, but you would think the enemies right outside of Dracula's castle would at least get you the experience you need, but not the case. I think it's fitting that we finish this at night. Here on day four, I think we might get in just before day before midnight on day five, before that triggers, so not too bad, because time stops when you get into a Dracula's castle, which is completely devoid of enemies, actually. It's almost like they just ran out of development mojo at the end of this game. I don't know, there's not a lot going on here. You use your uh, holy water to clear out a few bricks, but other than that, it's just a beeline straight to Dracula. We haven't talked about this, but we talk about how annoying it is that not only do we have to fight Dracula, but we have to go around and get his pieces to bring him back to life just to beat the crap out of him one last time. I mean, come on now. Talk about going the extra mile to uh, shake off a curse after the end of that first Castlevania. Again, link should be in the description. Make that jump there right at the edge. Don't even bother with the stairs where you can avoid them. And yeah, final boss, Gary, take us home. All right, final boss in Castlevania II, Simon's Quest, Dracula. I wish I could tell you I have a complicated strategy for taking down Dracula, but you don't need it. You just need the gold dagger. Just keep throwing it. Every time you get that third hit in, throw another one. Just keep stacking that damage, stunning Dracula. 15 damage per hit. They'll be dead before you know it. Congratulations, you've beaten Dracula. Simon's Quest, Castlevania 2. They're on you. Good job. You did it. We did do it. There you go. Thank you very much for the tips. And this is the good ending in Castlevania 2, Simon's Quest. I'm going to let a bit of that populate the screen before I start to read that. It's very slow. But the encounter with Dracula is terminated. Read that too quickly. Simon Belmont has put an end to the eternal darkness in Transylvania. It's a much happier place now. Tourism is going to skyrocket. Disney might put in a new amusement park. But his blood and sweat, are we talking about mine or Dracula's? Penetrated the earth and will grow one hell of a tomato, what? Induce magic and happiness. Oh, that's nice. So maybe Disney is moving in. For all those jerks who, I mean, we didn't talk to them, but everyone who led us astray, I don't know, screw them. That's what I say. They didn't help me. A few of them did. Most of them just charged me, but. 1431 to 1476, and of course the hand comes out of there. Come on. Come on, after all that. But let's go ahead and show you the other endings. If you take a bit longer, if you go to, I think, what, 8 days to 14 days, if you beat it in that span of time, you get this response right here. Although the conference, this is going too slow. Fluff, give us another fluff fact before I read this out. During the ending of Castlevania II, Simon's Quest, Eagle Eye players will note that the years engraved on Dracula's headstone read 1431 to 76. This is a reference to the years Vlad Tepes lived. Better known as Vlad the Impaler, 
This leader of Wallachia in the 15th century was a major inspiration behind Bram Stoker's Dracula. Incidentally, the third mansion, Brahms Mansion, is a reference to Bram as well. Pretty cool. I like that. Thank you very much, Fluff. So in this ending, the normal ending, I guess, I guess this is the one they figure people are going to get most of the time as they're stumbling about trying to figure out where to kneel or, you know, what items they need and who the heck's telling them the truth. Um, so we banish the curse, but we die in the process, I suppose. Um, so that's, that's a bummer. It seems like we're alive. We're kneeling. It's the exact same pose we struck in the good ending. I don't know. But, uh, there you go. And we get this one during the day. The last one was at sunset. This one during the day. And there's that ending. And let's go ahead and show you, just for the interest of coming full circle, let's show you the bad ending. You have to take 15 days or more, which is very easy to do in this game if you don't know where you're going or what you're meant to do. But the battle's consummated. Now peace and serenity. They've returned to the land of Transylvania. Been restored. Disney's eyeing up some property. Property values in general are probably going to go up. But anyway, that's not for this walkthrough. That's for another one. <laughs> it's for one of our spin-off channels where we talk more about the real estate values of uh, video games that we've played. But for right now, we died. We did not survive. Not sure how that's too different from the last ending, actually. Curse has still been lifted. But, uh, anyway. We're dead. <laughs> this game takes place seven years after the, uh, the first one. For what it's worth, after Dracula put that curse on us when we defeated him in the first game. Much more difficult, that first game, in terms of platforming. Again, a lot of the difficulty to this game is just stems from not knowing where you're going, so... Once you know that, it's not too bad, but at least we'll be remembered for our bravery and courage and the fact that we're a sucker who will spend 50 hearts on a single-use oak steak. But anyway, thanks so much for attending this class. Please subscribe if you have not yet already done so. We do one of these classes every single week. We'd love to have you enrolled. And let me know what your memories are of this game. It was a lot more daunting, admittedly, when we were younger and didn't know where the heck we were going so i hope this helped you out i hope you'll try picking this game up and beating it we'll see you next week in the same spot for next week's class thanks for watching and don't forget to like and comment on this video and click subscribe if you haven't already as this seriously helps me to keep making great content for you and check the description of this video to see what song is playing right now please don't pretend